Well, what's going on guys? My name is Lexacy, and as you can tell behind me, there is no cars. There is no F-150, there is no Durango Hellcat, there's nothing. And we need to talk, so let's get this video going. So first things first guys, it is really, really good to be back. Honestly, it's been a minute, it's been a few months, and uh, you know, I do this thing once in a while, but as you can tell behind me, there's no cars here. There's no Supra, there's no Camaro, there's no F-150, there's no Durango, there's just this boring Tesla that my wife drives. Because, well, and the whole garage is empty. There's no stickers anywhere. Everything is completely empty. And uh, I was actually using the stroller uh, as my uh, camera stand for that uh, one segment. Because we're moving out, guys. We sold our house. We are gone. We're moving to a new place. We're gonna be building our dream home. So it's just exciting. There's a lot happening. And I had to get rid of some toys. So at one point, this one guy messaged me and said, hey, do you wanna sell your F-150? Full price, whatever you want, I'll pay for it. And I told him, that's fine, man, but what am I gonna do? I, I need something to drive, because obviously the whole freaking garage is empty. So you know what? He offered me his toy. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm gonna try to stay as calm as possible so my neighbors don't hate me more than I already do. I wanna introduce to you guys my 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus with a stage one sheepy turbo kit i mean it does not get better than this maybe a stage two but ladies and gentlemen look at this bad boy right here this is the most sickest r8 you can buy v10 plus with all the goodies on it i'm trying not to scream or yell guys but this right here has been mind-blowing like legitimately this is the sickest ride you can get now stage one gets you 850 horsepower as you can tell with the custom sheepy exhaust right there guys and of course you have the sheepy intakes with their logos on there i don't know if you can tell it but both on there and of course color matched precision turbos hiding right behind of course the worst part right there so you can barely see them but guys i know i can't believe it either this was not supposed to happen for another year and a half again i was supposed to be building a house not buying fast toys that i was going to get later i was going to get a hurricane but when this came up when he said it and he said hey let's trade uh, let's trade toys i was like how am I going to tell this to my wife? And the first thing she said was like, okay, how are you going to do this? Let's make it happen. I was like, what? This is not supposed to be happening. But guys, I am so stoked. You know why? Because this means vlogs and a bunch of new content on an exotic level. I know some people call it a baby Lambo or wannabe Lambo, but this right here is just practical. This is exactly what I wanted. And it came with a twin turbo kit. That saved me about $40,000 and it's already done. And the deal was too good to be true, but I got it and I gotta say, I love this thing. Let me show you the interior, guys. So, of course, V10 Plus gets you the carbon everywhere. It's got a carbon diffuser, carbon, uh, of course, spoiler, which I love that spoiler. I hate R8s with no spoiler on it. It's got the uh, carbon front lip on it and, of course, carbon ceramic brakes. So, those are expensive. I don't want to know how much it is to fix those or replace those. Carbon mirrors, of course, and oh, the best part right here, and the reason I fell in love with this car is that red interior with the quilted stitched seats and of course uh alcantara roof i mean this thing is so sick it was so hard to get used to not having a screen there because everything is just on a digital screen this bad boy right here is insane i already drove it for about a week and i gotta say i, I can't stop loving this thing that's the sounds you're gonna hear with me the spooling of the turbos is just amazing so with the sheepy stage one kit you also get a water to air uh tank for the intercoolers so this thing is awesome it's already it's it's done right i mean honestly even it's got a drain uh plug there to drain the water and put some ice in there if you needed to it's awesome now you don't have any space but let's be honest you never had a uh, space in the r8 anyway so let's move on to the back and of course the really good goodies the ones that everybody wants to see and to do that this part i hate on the r8s but you have to literally walk in here gotta touch the button gotta get the ignition going then you press the secret button right there and boom it comes up and now we're gonna take a look at what make this bad boy such a bad boy first off i love the attention to detail the lights in the engine bay of course the uh carbon covers and trim pieces everywhere and then you got the bad boy right there the sheepy twin turbo kit on top of an awesome v10 platform with that dual clutch transmission and of course all-wheel drive because we are not idiots and with high horsepower cars and let's be honest 
this is not a car with a mid-engine platform that you want to drive in a real-wheel drive version. So let's get this bad boy on the road and let me tell you the whole story of how this whole thing went down and uh, why I said the deal was a little too good to be true. All right guys, so let's get this bad boy on the road and let's talk about what is this car. But before we do any of that, let me, uh, you gotta hear this. You just gotta hear this bad boy. God, it just sounds so freaking good, man. This, like V10 overall, just sounds amazing. But you add the turbo sounds to it. Watch. Let me, uh, let me get a little spool up going here. <laughs> I love this thing. I love it so much. There is no like babying this car. Like it just drives so freaking good, and it sounds so amazing that you want to get on it. You really, really do. So let's talk about what is this car what is an audi r8 some people call it the baby lambo i call it a practical lambo so what do i mean by that as somebody that looked at huracans and owning one of them because this is exactly what this platform is it's the same car for about half the price this vehicle 2017 audi r8 v10 plus all-wheel drive sticker for around i think 220 but for the money this thing is just so much better because you're not paying the lambo taxes but you're getting the same naturally aspirated 5.2 liter v10 that puts out 560 horsepower wait downshift on its own i'm not doing anything but this car is so smart it does it for you sorry let's keep on talking so from factory this car is 560 horsepower all-wheel drive does about 3.5 seconds 0 to 60. this was seven years ago but the v10 plus version which is what this car is also gets you an additional 60 horsepower which puts it at 610 horsepower from factory and it does 0 to 60 at 2.9 seconds now some independent reviewers to when this car first came out and did videos on it they got it down as low as 2.6 seconds for a $200,000 mark not a lot of cars seven years ago could say that they're able to achieve such fast 0 to 60s now I know a lot of people in the world of exotics and high horsepower cars like these talk about the 60 to 130 which is something I haven't been able to test out on this car yet but I definitely should and I definitely will so from factory this thing is a beast it sounds amazing but you know that this thing ain't stuck, guys. Come on, you know there's stuff done to it. So let's talk about what's done to this bad boy. Now, for a lot of you guys on the West Coast, I'm pretty sure you've heard of Sheepy Race. You know who that is. And I have been following them for about last three to four years, just finding them on YouTube and through friends that always talk about this company. So for you guys on the West Coast, correct me if I'm wrong, Sheepy and Gintani are known for messing with these V10s, the R8s. Uh, of course, you got VF Engineer, but that's for superchargers, but for twin turbo, kids it's Kentiny and sheepy race or whatever they were called back then i don't remember the exact name i feel like they changed i think it was just sheepy but this has their stage one kit which is about thirty-eight thousand dollars. it has also the precision turbos which is what they used to put back in the day they switched to garrett's because precisions are really hard to replace or find on the market these days just like any turbos for that matter but this bumps it from 610 horsepower to 800 horsepower now that is from what i understand that crank which is totally fine with me because that much horsepower in this lightweight car that weighs barely 3,000 uh, pounds a little over that it makes this car insane like legitimately this car is stupid for what it can do and of course you got a straight pipe v10 now because of course the exhaust has to be changed to put the turbos in there and you can definitely see them peeking out the back and they have been uh painted red the same with the intakes with the sheepy uh, logo on it it's like the perfect icing on the cake the perfect cherry on top of the icing on the cake this car attracts so much attention it is insane now for anybody that has had a v10 r8 lamborghini any car with a dual clutch transmission including gtrs you know what i'm talking about when i say you can't really do dig racing on these cars without doing the proper modifications so even though this has a stage one kit on it the first thing they tell you is you cannot and i repeat you cannot do dig races you can't do drag racing on this thing and you cannot be launching in first second gear you just can't do that because the clutches the clutch pack and the first second gears in the transmission are not really designed to handle that much extra torque slash wheel horsepower so that's the first thing you learn and that's the first thing that uh, i was told by 
Alex, who works at Sheepy Race. In fact, he owns Sheepy Race. And I gotta say what I really, truly enjoy and respect Alex for, I reached out to him as soon as I got the car, because I was like, hey man, no idea what I'm getting myself into, but I know this is not fixing a, a Camaro Z01 or a Supra. This is fixing if something goes wrong in Exotic at this point. So I'm gonna pay Exotic prices. So let's do this the correct way. You know what? Instantly responded to me on Instagram. He doesn't know me. All I said was, hey, I just bought a car off of a guy that has your kid on it. What do I need to know? I'm talking within minutes, he already responded. And that's why that dude, there's like, he, I respect the crap out of him. I obviously will go through him directly for this build for anything that needs to be done and everything that we will be doing to this car whether we wanted to do it this early or not we have to do it and i'll explain that in a little while but alex at sheepy race brother you got my business for a very long time but anyways because of the clutch pack being so brittle on this you do have to upgrade that anytime you even consider doing any sort of drag racing or even low speed roll racing so good thing for me i'm not planning to be on the drag race uh track anytime soon i am uh, planning to do some roll racing in mexico of course when i travel across the border and do that third gear should get me well let's see if i put in third gear right now 4500 rpm and i'm coasting at 45 miles an hour jesus Christ, it just keeps pulling guys oh i love this thing man we're gonna have so much fun and don't like that for 50 we actually picked this up at a good timing where oh i don't know the season is just starting now like that for 50 we got here in october i had like a month and a half left before every track shut down because it was too cold and you couldn't get any traction we're about to have a lot of fun this year guys so let's talk about how much did i get this car for and how did this deal go down i'm gonna say it right now from the beginning, from the get-go, this seemed too good to be true. This whole deal just seemed like, man, look, the price was $160,000. For $160,000 to get a V10 Plus 2017, now this does have 54,000 miles, it just hit 54,000. It's a little bit high on the mileage, but it's a V10 bulletproof motor. But for the price of 160,000 is what they're going stock, maybe a few bolt-ons, like I don't know, exhaust or intakes or something like that, or a tune. But to get a stage one sheepy kit on it, a twin turbo kit for 160 grand, that's a steal because there's only two more that I know of. One is a Gintani that sells for like 165. It's got about 20,000 miles less than this car, uh, but it just seemed like a really good deal, man. And so what ended up happening, we still have the Durango, don't get me wrong, but I did have it posted up for sale. And so the guy reached out through so many shares for the Durango, and when I had the F-150 posted up for sale, he said, hey man, I want the Durango, I have a twin turbo R8 for, uh, for a trade, are you interested? I was like, hey. Uh, you know, not really in the perfect opportunity because I'm about to sell my house. I need to focus on getting another house. I can't be doing $160,000 purchases right now. It's just not the right move for me. It's like, yeah, man, think about it. Let me know. You know, we'll, we'll make it work. And then because of how many shares this F-150 got, I think it was like 50 shares or 100 shares. I don't remember. Tons of people shared this thing. He was like, hey, hold up. You have an F-150 and it's a 4x4 and it's got a Whipple on it. I want that truck. I'll do anything. I'll pay your asking price. Here's my R8. Let's make this happen. I was like, all right. Now it's a little worse because now I'm going from $60,000 investment to $160,000 investment. But I was thinking about it and it just seemed like, you know what? Screw it, man. I'm really coming out in a good position with the value of the R8 compared to what's done to it with the modifications. I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm just going to do it. It's, it is what it is. Seems like a good deal. I'm going to get a PPI done, pre-purchase inspection if it checks out because he's all the way in Salt Lake City, Utah. This transaction is gonna be a little tough to do. Uh, from the get-go, this thing has been a nightmare, but we got it figured out, everything worked out. We both have our vehicles. I'm obviously driving uh, my new one. He's driving F-150. He's already racing it. In fact, he won a race four hours after he got the truck there. He already took it to the drag ship and beat like two different classes, which is awesome. Good thing for him, he's gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna try this bad boy right here. Super stoked, can't stop getting on the gas pedal. That's why I'm getting like 11 miles a gallon. It is what it is, you know, you kinda expect that to happen, but it's just, it's worth it, man. People just always stare at you in this car, and that's not why I got it, but it just sounds so, and the crackle is just, God, man, I can't get enough of this car. Let's drive it for a little bit more, and then we're gonna pull over and talk about the things that went wrong with this deal. 
So now that we finally got the test drive out of the way and you guys got to experience it with me and you know exactly what I say, this thing is just such a freaking beast and I'm super excited that we're able to bring it to the channel today. Uh, but let's talk about why did I say that this deal and I still believe this deal is too good to be true. Well, let's go over some things, right? So remember how I said that the 160,000, you could pretty much get like a, a base V10 R8 or V10 Plus for that matter for about 150, maybe 140s if you get lucky, but 160 was just, it was a good spot, good sweet spot for a stock R8. We're looking at one with the stage one sheepy built kit on it. So <laughs> that should have been the first part that should have threw me off as to why, I'm not gonna mention any names, why this guy decided to sell it to me for that price and trade me for the truck. There is a list of thousands of dollars of things that uh, I was not aware of or told about uh, that this car has in a bunch of issues. Now, some of these are minor issues. Some of these are major issues. Now, you're going to say, Alex, how the heck did you buy a $160,000 exotic car and not do a PPI inspection or pre-purchase inspection? Oh, believe me, I did. Because I was like, look, man. I'm not buying this car, I'm not taking a loan out from the bank for this car without making sure this thing is 100% running. Now, I understand it's modified, I understand that that could be oil leaks, there could be some vacuum leaks, maybe a boost leak or something like that. So my buddy recommended a performance shop there directly in Salt Lake City that specializes in building high performance vehicles. So I was like, man, forget the uh, Audi dealership, I'm gonna take it directly there because at least they're gonna know what they're looking at. So I took it to that place and uh, you know what, they drove it, they they checked under the car, they checked the brakes, which these are carbon ceramics, so obviously uh, you can't really check them. You have to put them on the scale to make sure that they uh, measure out in weight correctly. I'm talking about the rotors, of course, and everything checked out. They even sent me a text message that said, hey man, we drove the car, we looked at the car, it's, everything sounded perfect, the car runs like crazy good. You will have no issues whatsoever with this car. I was like, great. And then I get the car, and literally, if anybody could have just drove the car, they would have noticed at least three of the issues out of five or six that this car has. And these issues that are gonna cost me thousands of dollars to fix, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. Now, am I still happy? Of course I'm happy. Am I kinda pissed off? I am, but at myself, because at the end of the day, I should have done the work, I should have done my due diligence and made sure that this car is in the spec and the condition that I was told it was but unfortunately it's not so we are going to deal with those i'm going to go over the whole list of issues now one more thing i got to mention before we end this video a mutual friend of me and the seller uh, reached out to me after he seen that i was the one that purchased this car i was like hey man this might be the same car that i was told about that has a major issue so if that is true i am literally going to be probably minimum of another twenty thousand dollars in debt to get this thing repaired and running correctly we won't know that till next video don't get me wrong guys i'm super happy i'm not trying to downsize or be depressed about the situation this is an exotic car this is like my dream come true i wasn't supposed to have this for at least another year and a half maybe two years but at the end of the day it happens everything happens for a reason and now now we are gonna get to enjoy it. We're gonna enjoy it uh, doing a lot of road racing you know, at the track and stuff like that because as I said earlier, first and second gear completely uh, stock on this car. And for anybody that knows anything about these V10s and this setup, this powertrain, that is a lot of issues and a lot of things that could go wrong. And you know, at the end of the day, it's not fixing a Hellcat. This is fixing an exotic, which you know, you will pay the exotic prices. So there's so much to go over with you guys. I just can't stop looking at it. I just gotta show you. Look at this, man. There's just no bad angle on this car whatsoever. That spoiler, everything about this car just screams exotic. And when you start that bad boy up, obviously, Oh, it reminds you of what you're looking at and what you're dealing with guys I am super stoked to have this on the channel. I hope you guys are as well drop a like drop a comment What do you think of the R8s? Yes, I know it's not a Lambo. Everybody's gonna say it I just didn't want to pay the Lambo tax on it for no apparent reason Plus this thing is a lot more comfortable to drive daily, which of course I am gonna be doing so Thank you guys so much for watching enjoy your life enjoy your cars and I will see you in the next episode. Peace